Let's start. Yeah. Uh, so today, basically, we are talking about state space models, or more likely, state space sequence model. So remember that that has three S: state space sequence, because the number of S will matter now. Uh, so the title is SSMs are all you need? Question mark. Because uh, we have seen the emergence of uh, like different ML models from like CNNs to RNNs, RNNs to LSTM, LSTM to transformer. So, but what is like happening right now? There has been a going back to RNNs and that is basically the state space models. So what is sequence modeling? Sequence modeling basically is how you take an input sequence X and map it to an output sequence Y. Uh, and there are multiple ways to do it. We can use the traditional RNNs. Uh, the problem with RNNs is that they have, they can't be parallelized. Like you need the output from the first state to, you can then only, only feed the next input and compute. So it's a sequential computation which cannot be parallelized. Uh, but the advantage of RNN was it had only linear complexity. Now, then we have CNNs. CNNs are highly parallelizable, which was one of the basic reasons why it is using computer vision. The problem with CNNs is the kernel size needs to be small for that uh, uh, efficiency to kick in. And uh, because of the small kernel size, we have uh, these models cannot handle long range dependencies. And then we have transformers. Transformers are parallelizable, they can handle long range dependencies. But then it comes with the additional complexity. Just it has a quadratic complexity. So what do we want? So basically, we want something that is parallelizable, uh, that doesn't have a quadratic complexity, and that can still handle long range dependencies. Now, uh, I am not from an electronics or electrical background or control background, but I hope others will know this better than me. Uh, what are state space models and the state space equations? So, if there is anything like error in what I am telling, just like <laughs> ignore it. Uh, so, what I understand is it maps an out input x of t to an output y of t. And uh, in state space models, the state space models are linear time invariant models, which basically means that the matrices A, B, C, and D, uh, which governs this transition, uh, are independent of time. Yeah, so from moving from continuous time, uh, we work with discrete uh, numbers. So first thing that we need is a discretization of that continuous equation. And uh, this is a simple approximation of that discretization step, uh, where we can see that we can rewrite the same equation in discrete terms, uh, where the uh, initial state, uh, where the current state is dependent on the previous state and the current input. And from the current state, we can directly get the current output. And this basically is nothing, it can be like, we can see that this is way, like exactly equal to what a linear RNN looks like. So basically, the C, uh, SSM is basically a linear RNN. Now, let us do the computation. Non-linear There will be non-linearity non inside. So if you have ReLU, then it becomes non-linear? Yeah. Because if there is non-linearity, then you cannot do yes. use this equation anymore. This is the linear time invariance. Right. Yeah, so can you, uh, so, so you said lin is linear argument. Yeah. So, I don't still uh, understand what what is different than these. Are. So H T is a function of H T minus one with just a matrix multiple. Okay. If it was a nonlinear function, F oh, of, there will be a F theta of H T minus there one. There is no activation. Yeah. 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 There's no activation. So now let us see how the computation happens in it. So this is the equation. Now, T minus one was the uh, previous state. state. Previous T is the current state, and they have a linear combination. Yeah, uh, it's a linear combination of the previous output state output and the in current input. That is the current state, and the current output is di directly a, a transformation of the current state, and everything is linear. 
and the a b and c doesn't change with the input this is constant for the entire sequence h t and we were finding h t for the current state with okay we got it the linearity is in the current state h t yeah okay like okay. current state b how how the input is taken how the output is generated and how the state transitions that is where the linear yeah abc are random learnable but they will be constant for the model just like parameters are constant yeah, for us yeah and what why it is a bar b bar relative? for each input token it will be same so like with t a b and c doesn't change right. so but what is the reason for bar oh so so this equation so oh. when we linearize uh, the oh. this equation okay. uh, if this is the initial a b and c when we discretize oh, it okay. you are saying it yeah. is something different yeah it is not so we need this discretization parameter delta delta t the delta and uh, so the new a will be actually this i del t plus delta a and the new b will be delta b which are again constants which so we can like club them and name it as a new constant basically a new matrix so now let us do the recurrent computation like how this com this computation actually happens so this is the uh, first hidden state directly computed from the current first input then you can comp compute the first output because there was no previous state this is the first one so for the next hidden state this is the computation and what we can see is it is only dependent on the inputs there are like constant matrices now this is the first output which again is just dependent on these two inputs similarly the next output so now you can see a, a pattern right it is something times the first input times something times the second input plus something times the third inputs where this are are constants so basically uh the every output at any state is just dependent on all the inputs multiplied by some matrices which are fixed to the entire sequence so if we already know what this a b c matrices are and we already know all the inputs then we don't have to the rnn problem does not come we don't need to wait for the first output to compute the next output you can do the whole thing in one shot and this uh, like uh, what you say reformulation is the cnn kernel reformulation of linear rnns so basically this is the formula for any the kth output and this can be formulated with a convolutional kernel where this is the convolutional kernel so the kernel yeah i will show that like what exactly okay. it does what is the convolutional kernel this is the convolutional kernel and this is the input now how do we like use the kernel we just slide the kernel and compute each output that is what we do right so we have to pad it and do the computation so this is how the first output is computed we slide the kernel second output third output fourth output so if you already know the entire kernel it's very easy so in one sweep you, so basically it's a cnn kernel like how the cnn one, the one d cnn so what like your uh, as your input increases and output increases the size of kernel will also increase right yeah yeah the size of kernel will increase but the, you can just sweep the kernel in one shot so this uh, actually this uh, or is yolo kernel size that is it fixed or like it will be problem dependent or maybe like what does it depends on is c a p s p a q p p a no these are all learnable parameters that we will learn the 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 thing is you don't need to like so exactly how a cnn works like you this in cnn this will be learned right yes, yes. yeah same way this is also learned but in cnn what is the advantage like once you learn the parameter that is fixed through the entire oh, image so you are so saying it's fixed no no something width width is fixed or this width can be anything yeah this x1 x oh the, you are telling this some no, no, kernel kernel length length of the card or anti kernel length uh, that the image in will be there length will be same yes. as the length of the input yeah So, oh, there are four okay. orange color. Yeah, uh, uh, length is same as five, six, 
So original input is of size four. Kernel will also be of size four. Padded will be of two n minus one. Yeah. So this is for not one data, right? This is for two data also. No, this is for one data. So one data. Only. Sequence models. This is for sequence model. SSM is for sequence so models only. I have a sequence of one thousand. Hmm. What should be the kernel length? One thousand. One thousand. It will be. I think so. I didn't actually check it. But if if it but it looks like that because. Uh, why do I even do zero padding? And because for any particular input, you need this big kernel, right? So I think it should be the length of the actual input. Right. The advantage is if you know C and A and B, then it's a very simple computation. Yeah, th that I understood what yeah. you meant to say. Yeah, you are doing certain, but but the thing is, let's say I, I let's say talk about stock market, the mm -hmm. continuous data coming. Yeah. So now you are saying ki, like what should be the value there? You have to so you just like in RLN, you fix the window size at some point, some oh, large number. So then when you, yeah, yeah. you are fixing the cardinal size, yeah. so that means you, that mid ground. You are saying it's not completely parallelizable, but it's not uh, sequential either. You see, exactly yeah. like a CNN. In CNN also, we don't take the full image as a yeah, yeah, space, yeah. right? Got it, got it. So basically what this tells is, so how long you want the context, context length to be, based okay. on that you fix the kernel. But what this gives you is a kernelized approach, like a CNN where got it, got it. you can parallelize the entire process. Yeah, exactly. So it's like n gram, n gram, it's a n number of words from backwards, we are uh, fixing the n. See in n gram, the thing is there has to be n words. Here you don't need n words, you just need three matrices. You can compute the entire thing from that three matrices. You have like a exploding or vanishing problem because you are raising a to the power some large number. That I don't. Because I think in, in, by learning the model, we'll be actually learning these three things separately. I don't know whether it should be an issue because even if it is learning the initial uh, kernel parameters. And since there's a dependency, like this is the kernel. If it learns C and B here, and if it learns C A B here, basically it can actually learn everything else because you don't need the gradient to actually compute all these things, right? It's basically multiple. So you are uh, this approach is the new paper came out. No, this is the old SSM. Like this has been for years. Yeah, Nothing no, is it's special it's in this. This doesn't you see this model is there, it gives very bad result. That is why that nobody ever used it. That is why RNN became useful because adding a nonlinearity actually helps in some learning. This is performs very bad. But now I will tell you what came next that actually uh, thought made people look at it back. Okay. So my point was this is parallelizable. Yeah. It's easily parallelizable. Now then came S4 model came last year. And what is S4? So I said count the S's, right? So it was a state space sequence model. So S3 in S4, they added one more thing called structured state space sequence model. So what is structured space space sequence model? So basically, SSM performs poorly. And uh, from, yeah, I should have put that equation again. Yeah, so this, this equation, what does these matrices represent? So B shows how the current input has to be taken. C shows how the current output has to be generated. So but what, yeah, but what does A show? A tells how to like take actual previous information, mm -hmm. which is the most important part. Mm -hmm. So A matrix defines the, in some sense, the capacity of the uh, entire. Uh, it's not going to the, the LSTM duration only. LST, uh, the long range dependency is taken care in the H, uh, HT minus yeah, one. But it is uh, linear. Uh, but, but isn't it? Yeah, LSTM again adds three nonlinearities on top of one. So that is where the difference comes. So what they are telling is in SS, SS, SS4, uh, this A matrix captures the past information. So let us make the structure of A matrix like a, like let's introduce a structure to it so that it can capture the information in, in some particular way, like in a structured way. And okay, here again, I don't know what this means. Uh, they did, they made made sure that a matrix is a hippo matrix. What is that? I have no idea, but this is the thing. It is this equation, hippo matrix. Like it has to be this. Uh, I don't. I think it's an upper triangular matrix. Uh, and if they are telling that if this is the and they have some mathematical uh, justification for it. Uh, so they they are telling that this is something like a uh, Fourier transform. 
but not approximately it is formed from some legender approximation and legender polynomial again don't know the maths but what they are telling is just by changing the structure of a matrix to a hippo matrix uh, they are able to approximate the uh, what do you say so it's like a, it's like a moving average of all so the you are saying how you will uh, keep the information from the past state that is being uh, that is being uh, uh, managed by this a matrix the hippo matrix yeah and that uh, that this terms actually controls that only exactly so this is the structure this should be the structure of the matrix so they force the matrix to have the structure and it kind of approximate all the uh, like input better so this actually performs better okay. like better than rnns lstms not transformers but it performs better why still being a linear time invariant model so it has the linearity and time independence and this is the uh, what do you say the complexity of this model uh, in the table what they show is the bold is the theoretical best that we want, which is the like lowest complexity. And it shows that the number of parameters. Uh, so basically, L is the sequence length. And our thing, because these are long sequence models, we don't want any of the complexity to be dependent on L. It can be dependent on H. B doesn't matter, but it shouldn't be dependent on L. And that is what SSMs. L is the length of the data itself. Yeah, length of the sequence itself. Because as the sequence increases, like, it uh, yeah, it will be. Exactly. So, like, that's the thing. Like, transformers are like L square comes in. But in S S4, that none of those problems crop up. So, it is, in some sense, better than all the three attention, recurrence, and convolution. Now, is it that good, but the actual performance? What is uh, H uh, tilde and L beta? It's in, in the tables. Uh, the state size n of s4 is tied to h. So I don't log factors. Yeah. Is it like fraction of h or fraction of l? Like some variable. Log, log of h and log of l. It seems. Tilde denote log factors. Second row of the caption. Okay, so it is not b d h. B H A B L H square. It is B yeah. B H uh, log L log L. Yeah. So everyone with me? Yeah. So it is log family. So this uh, A matrix. So does it ensure that it will? That the uh, products of A will not uh, blow up. That I don't know. I don't know how the math mathematics behind how they like. The only thing I understood was that it kind of makes it like a linear moving average of the past inputs. Linear, like not linear exponential moving average of the past inputs. So A and K is the N K element of the matrix. No, no, no. So I think uh, so. A and K, K will be like. K should be the K data. K should be some should length. Be the things. A and K. A will be the. Uh, what is my? Can you can go back to your previous slide? Maybe K is from coming from there. Yeah, yeah it is coming the, from there only. Length of the cardinal itself. It is coming from this equation actually. So, so N and K are what elements of like the position of. K is the data. Why K? So. So n and k, so one will be the state dimension. And I think n is the state dimension and k is the input dimension or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the y k from there, I think. K, y, k. It both are state dimensions, right? Because h is dependent on h pass. So like, which of the previous... See, both h, h is a vector itself. Yeah, so, it should be an n-dimensional vector. Because yeah, yeah. So n and k are basically one is for t minus one, the other is for t. No? Yeah. They are both coming from the state, but how the states are dependent on the previous state. Yeah. So how every state will look at the previous state yeah. and take what is needed or not. But yeah. there's no gate. So n is becoming the number of the length of the kernel. No, 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 no. LNK are like IJ, I think. Yeah, yeah. It is just the dimension of that matrix. Just the positional 
इंडेक्स ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स ओके लाइक रो एंड कॉलम बट वाई कैन like it's like a i j yeah yeah it's not yeah exactly quantity to duty so if n is greater than k if it's a rectangular thing then this has to be the thing if it's a, like right so we don't have to learn this or what i think some of the elements has to be learned but the structure should be this even if it is learned or something i think how that like is like like if n and k are i like i j then there is nothing to be learned So I think they are uh, they are fixing how the information will be. Uh, so the A matrix I don't think will be learned anymore. I think that will be fixed. So only the B and the C that will be learned. Yeah. It's just like in Fourier transform, what happens? So we know this uh, cosine kernels, and we any arbitrary signal we decompose in terms of the cosine signal. Yeah. Here we are actually fixing the. Uh, yeah. The the, the, the frequency is fixed for each of the signal. Yeah. It is only the same intensity that. They might fix some. Yeah. This will be fixed. And they are saying it's a linear function of that particular thing. Yeah. Yeah. Non-linear linear approximation of the non-linear. Yeah. Yeah. So this matrix will be fixed. That is the structure that you induce through the S four model. So I think. So actually, I expected that the control people might know what H hippo is better. <laughs> yeah, I don't say. If actually, so we people, uh, they should be able to explain this. Yeah, I'm a mechanical guy. I have no idea. <laughs> But it's also not controlled by them. But not uh, these kind of control. Like our thing is like we have vibrations and stuff mostly. See, model. Order control. Instead of linear, we have mostly differential equations. We don't deal with this. The twenty twenty paper doesn't have. I mean, it also has support. Yeah, the paper doesn't actually go into details of explaining this thing. They just cite some theorem and then tell that we implemented this. Most support references are by these guys. Yeah, the I mean, they, although they didn't invent it. <laughs> so, what reason? So, like the, the interesting thing is, so the module that they built uh, is called S three. Uh, it's called Hungry Hungry Hippo. I don't know why, but there's is, a there's a toy like a game toy in do a sport something. Oh, then that is why. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the 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 the, 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 hippo the module is called S S three. And then I was wondering why it is called S three. And then somewhere they have written it's Hungry Hungry Hippo. They didn't bother to explain why. <laughs> and uh, yeah so now uh, the problem with the s4 model is again what transformer can do it cannot do content aware reasoning because for every input we have the same abc you cannot uh, actually do certain tasks like selective copying or induction head so what is selective copying so copying is like you have like blue orange red green And you want to again output it after some time uh, in the same fashion. The model can do that. But in selective copy, it's like retain the order of it, but only copy selected tokens. This is equivalent to you have a tweet in which you want to remove the swear words from. So such task you cannot do. And the second task is called induction head. Induction head is like uh, when the model wants to see like what should be the next output to be predicted. Uh, and there is a kind of order in it. Like if you have a black token, the next should be a blue token. So it has to look back to learn that. So it starts from some. Yeah. Kind of so this content aware reasoning they cannot do because A, B, and C are same for every token. It cannot select the correct information, and it doesn't have the input dependent manipulation that uh, transformers have. So that is what we are trying to put in it. But now you realize that the moment you add the input dependency, you lose the efficiency. All the everything that we told till now that makes this model so efficient, you will lose the the moment you add input dependency. So how do they overcome it? And that is the actual mamba. So this oh, is mamba. mamba. Oh. No, mamba is S six, and that is why. That is why it is S six. This is the reason. It because there are six S. It is like a snake hissing. So that's why it is called after its name after a snake. <laughs> This is the actual reason that they gave for calling it Mamba. There is no other reason. 
and every model that comes out after this uh, by every other people who kind of use sequence model is called viper and cobra and everything nobody actually thought why it is called mamba <laughs> So what is S six? Where are the extra two S's coming in? Selective it is selective scan, scan structured state space yes. sequence model. These are the pixels. These are like. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you can actually do this one plus two, two plus three, three plus four. These all things in one shot. Uh, then in the second thing, you can do these two sum. Uh, you can sum the output of this plus the output of four. Like every crisscross thing you can do, and you can uh, have the output there. The third step also, you can add the rest of the things. Why this is needed? Because you can compute all these outputs from the results of these intermediate computations. And since these can be done parallelly, you can actually do like uh, you don't need to actually compute everything sequentially. The entire operation can be much less complex if you use parallel uh, multiple threads. So, for example, this 21 can be seen as an output of uh, the sum of the these two operation plus this operation, uh, like sum of these two operations which can run in parallel, this operation and this operation that runs in parallel, and this two which can go in parallel. Three state, you can get that. Exactly. You don't need to wait till everything is computed to actually compute the. Why, why not? If we sum it together in the first step, can we not do that? What? what? Like there, we have six digits, so take six sequences, I think. Six? No, no. These are elements in sequence. Element so this is x1, x2, x3, x4, and these are y1, y2, y3, y4. So the only way we can do the thing is like we need this. So how you how in the original thing how can you do that? So you need this output, and you need the next. You need the sum, right? Only with this sum you can compute the next one. So you have nine. I want to compute this number. You cannot compute it. You need like all these computations to reach this thing. Okay. So yeah, now you got it, right? Yeah. So here you are assuming it's not like data is coming one at a time, rather you have a chunk of data. Yeah, the input sequence we already know. It's like a text or like this thing. We are not like the input sequence we know. The output is what we have to generate. So input we can so feed it and shoot it short. Yeah, you are doing one processing one by one and then yeah. reach there. Yeah. You are doing one at a time, like a few fewer than the, the Yeah, you can like in the log time, we can actually do this thing much faster. So this is one of the things that they realize. It reduces the complexity, and it's it, it can be implemented as a hardware-aware algorithm. And now, let's talk about A100. <laughs> so this is what we are familiar with, the 80 GB A100 GPU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 80 GB A100 GPU. So what does the 80 GB in A100 mean? So basically, every GPU has two memory. One is the slow high bandwidth memory called DRAM and a very fast SRAM. SRAM. What happens is all the input output operations like uh, copying and pasting, collecting the data, everything is done by the uh, slower high bandwidth DRAM and the actual computation is done on the SRAM. And now let us see how much is the actual size of these things and the speed of them. So the 80 GB is actually the DRAM, the slow one. The actual size of the SRAM in our A100 is 40 MB. <laughs> and this is the speed. At L1 cache. It is the L2 cache. Oh. Yeah. It is. So whenever you buy a GPU, you look at the L2 cache size. <laughs> Don't go with this. Yeah, it used to be in uh, I7 like 4, 4 MB, 8 MB. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Few years back. Yeah. So that is what the actual computation happens. And that is very fast. And this is just to lower the tensor everything. The computation doesn't happen here. And the speed is this. It is two teraflops in the DRAM, and it is 20 teraflops in the SRAM. There's an order of magnitude difference. And uh, and the, the basically, the entire compute is input-output bound. It is not bound by the speed of the, or the highest speed or the clock speed of the, uh, the GPU. It is because of the slow movement. Like for every tensor computation, it has to lower the tensor, do the additional operation, then again uh, copy the value, then take the next tensor, do the operation, then copy the value, then get the two outputs, again load it in, multiply. So this is what is happening. So the amount of uh, like operations that happens is so high, and it is bound by this transfer, not by the actual yeah, yeah. imputation data, speed. Data pass bandwidth. Exactly. So what the second thing comes in, kernel fusion. The idea is very simple. 
instead of copying for every single operations again from yeah just to make like single kernel <clears throat> so instead of preparing a scan output a bar b bar so basically this is this after digitalization right this a bar b bar there is actually these four things and from this you compute this and from this you then compute it back so they are telling instead of doing this you directly load this directly to the from the slot to the sra perform the computation uh, in sra and then only write the final output back to and this is the only thing they have written in the paper they don't know how they are doing it or anything so this is the only paragraph they, they have written out to the entire their, their code is available or the code is available so they they have not given any directives in the code the code i have in the In fine, it, it should not be in torch, right? It should be some high level language. Like native torch, like no, the, it is written in. I, I don't know whether their this control is not there in torch, right? This control is so, inside the Buddha. In by in the so this paper came in archive in December twenty five or something last year, and now it's been like what like three months, and uh, internet is full of quotes in Pytorch and TensorFlow and everything for Mamba. So I don't know whether they implement the kernel fusion. Or it is just like because this the I code. Did you say this con like torch do torch has this uh, control for SRAM and DRAM changing? I have no idea. I don't so even know whether they use so torch in that sense. Yeah. yeah, I don't know because JAX whether they use because many people prefer JAX. Oh, one of the so this paper is actually very significant in another thing that this is not this is the first paper to be recognized in some sense that was not from the Big Seven. This paper is an academic paper, completely academic paper. Two authors, Carnegie Mellon and Princeton. But one of the first paper to gain recognition that came without a Google research order or a Microsoft order or anything like that. So the way they have, so the paper is like eight pages, and you cannot fit all these things in eight pages. And in the first two three pages, they are just telling again about the old story of what SSM models are and S four. Mamba paper. Yeah, this is Mamba. So in the last four pages, then they had to like push everything that they did. Uh, like so, this is the only paragraph that they have explained. Like this is what they are doing to increase the speed. They use just SRAM. So basically, that's the thing. You instead of a series of kernel computation with input output after each uh, like the transfer operation, just do everything in the SRAM and copy it to HBM after that. And recomputation. This I think. some of you might know recomputation is the process where so when we do back propagation uh, we need the output of each node in the computational graph to do the back propagation so what does the our uh, our gpu do so after every forward pass operation through each node it stores the output okay. in the slow memory and when the back propagation happens it goes to Oh. It reloads these outputs back to come do the uh, gradient. So, and because that process is much slower than actually computing the output of each node in using the forward pass, they are like, we don't need to save the output. We don't want the output. Once the forward part, uh, uh, the complete output is uh, the loss is computed uh, uh, for back propagation. We will do the forward pass till that node every time to compute the output. And they showed that that is much faster. Let's do it. So, like the last uh, almost ten years of machine learning, in which we the way we have used back propagation is wrong. That's how I teach in class. <laughs> so, every day we are finding that things we are doing is wrong. So, I guess. So, you are saying in this method now we do not need to. Uh, load from the DRAM to SRAM. It's already there in the SRAM. Please, so like you just decompute it in the SRAM. Yeah, so see, decompute the forward pass. The earlier, understand program basically. Earlier, this is the way we are doing, right? We compute the output. Let's say five, seven, eleven. Then we compute some fifteen, and then we get a loss of like seven twenty to seventy two. So the thing is, this thing has to be stored by doing back propagation yeah. and. How does it store? It transfers it to the low, uh, the slow memory. Okay. So you have to trans 
if for every output it has to be transferred okay. here and when you go back so this you reach this node uh -huh. for doing back propagation you need the output uh -huh. this is now here so you go look here you then put it back you load it and then you compute they are like no this thing we are not doing we are doing this forward pass and after the why the forward pass after we don't need this right we lost this we didn't save it we lost it now what happens is when it is coming back right, when we need to come back it will be like this node right how do you compute the output we just do the forward pass to here intuitionally we think that this is a very like slow thing but you need to realize that this operation is much slower so than think, this operation think, Converting only all you need is like keep the weights intact. Data. No. Weights will be cached. Yeah. Weights, weights will be in here because you need the computation. So right. Forward process. Every every node got a value. The output of each node you don't you don't store. So you don't store. Yeah. So after let's then this file uh -huh. after you compute this this is like fifteen uh -huh. you don't need to retain this it vanishes. Okay. Yeah. Now you got one output. Now you are back propagating. You raise this node. You don't know the output value, so you recompute it. That is recomputation. Recompute it means faster than actually looking so and we, taking it. This recompute happens with the help of pass value also. Whatever yeah, there. you just need the output value of this node. That's all. Okay. It's our way. Whether you store it and retrieve or you recompute it, up to you. And they are telling recomputing is faster. It's the first to do this. Yeah, so actually these are the same people who wrote the paper on flash attention, where they do the same thing. Oh, oh, they made attention you faster. Are, you are saying now you have, your output is moving continuously, but your weight is always the, in, updated from the initial state. Maybe the, the entire graph is sitting in SF. Okay. The output of the graph they don't store. Okay. Just rerun the computation. Yeah, graph. when you say store, you have to go to the slower thing. So there is no story. Nothing is stored. Everything is computer. It's still quite unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, these are the same people who wrote the flash attention paper, which made attention faster in GPU. So like they they just they just used that here. They are like, where else can we use this? Let SSM. Let's make it faster. So yeah, this is the thing. We, avoid, we must also avoid saving the intermediate states, which are necessary for backpropagation. We carefully apply the classic technique of recomputation to reduce the memory requirements. Intermediate states are not stored, but recomputed in the backward pass when the inputs are loaded from HBM to SRAM. As a result, the fused selective scan layer has the same memory requirement as the optimized transformer implementation of flash attention. So when you know in which device you are playing with, then play according to the rules of the device. So this might not work like this in CPU. And then your model size is now limited by the cache size. That so I, yeah, in some sense, yeah. That was the N, the K N K. That I don't know, but uh, yeah. So you cannot train like large transformers in this. I don't know. They train like seven billion, sixteen billion oh, parameter yeah. models, like forty MB space. Maybe this needs thing, like right? you are saying, it's not completely parallelized. I think it, you can parallelize it in multiple Sometimes GPUs, right? Store, like after a, uh, one kernel, it will store, like one SM full. Then they don't store anything. That's what are. I'm telling. Yeah. The storing they are changing to recomputing, which will actually take more computational steps. But since computation is faster than storing and retrieving, it makes sense. In some, in some future, uh, we change the hardware. This won't work anymore. This is specific to that particular hardware. It's called hardware aware algorithm. So this is the way it works, putting it all together. The hardware, hardware aware state expansion. So the green is the slower GPU HBM, high bandwidth memory, and the orange is the SRAM. So whatever happens in, in shows in orange is what happens in the SRAM. Arrows in green are the uh, GPU HBM. So you have the input. From the input, the linear we project three and create three uh, outputs, which is the B, the delta, which is the distribution parameter, and the C matrix. And the, the distribution parameter uh, creates the, so A, B, the distribution parameter creates. Uh, C uh, is also directly projected from it. So these three things are now sitting in the HBU uh, 
uh, the HBM. Now what it does, the input is now transferred to the B, so that B matrix defines how the input is uh, processed to reach the, uh, what is it, how the input interacts with the uh, current state. And the previous state is sitting here, that will come through the SRAM, uh, the, oh, it multiplies in, with A to generate the uh, current state and which multiplied with C will give you the final output. So since all the computation is happening or the major computations are happening here and uh, uh, this the addition operations happens here, multiplication is happening here, it is fast. Now this is the actual module of Mamba and this is the S3 that I called the hungry hungry hippo. So basically, whatever we have mentioned previously is this particular module, SSM module. And uh, it has convolution, so it has these three projections uh, from the input. So these are like basically linear layers. And then uh, you have the, you, you multiply this with the convolution output, you have the SSM, you multiply. So this is like architecture of uh, the S4, which has the S3 as the basic module. And then this is a gated MLT architecture. So this uh, is the inverted bottleneck basically. Like you expand the dimension of uh, from like for example if your channel dimension like I don't know with C twins why should it, vector di embedding dimension uh, is like 128. You make it like four times 128, and then you process it and then you again compress it back kind of thing. And this is the Mamba architecture, which is kind of like a uh, like a conjugation of these two architectures. Uh, where you have these two inverted, inverted bottlenecks. You so you expand the dimension, you have a convolution with a nonlinearity. So they have this thing called SILU, switch activation. And uh, then you have the SSM layer. Then you like multiply it with this particular output, which is again, has again a uh, switch activation, and then you pass it. So this whole thing is the one Mamba layer. Now the performance. So this is the selective copying task and this is the induction head task, which we previously discussed, uh, which shows the content of our reasoning capabilities of the model. And this is the S4 model with S4 layer, which is the without the gating thing. And it is giving, see the improvement in performance. So the moment it became uh, context aware, it started doing uh, what it can. And then, I don't know what Haina is, but I think it's another SSM model. So this is S3, the hungry hungry hippo thing, which has S4. In S3, if you put S, the S6 in the SSM part, mm -hmm. it will still perform well. And this is the Mamba architecture, which has the highest performance. And this is active copy. And this is the more interesting thing. So this is very good result in the sense like, so the model is now trained in a data with 256 as the sequence length. So it can handle this much uh, 256 tokens at a time. And here, all models are performing well. So the training and the testing uh, sequence length are like same, no issue. The moment you increase the uh, sequence length, they are increasing it to 1 million. So this is like 1 million they are increasing. The performance of the S6 model is not uh, going down. Still getting the same performance. But all the other models are falling. Like the moment it reaches 1000, it is like dropping. And uh, this, these three ones are the attention models with different kinds of positional embeddings. They are all dropping. The S3 model, everything is dropping. Nothing can, can do the, uh, what do you say, the induction head top uh, if you keep increasing. But uh, Mamba is like, you bring it on. It doesn't so show any transformer model. How does it play? They are, though, this is transformer. Like the three, this, this is transformer. The performance is falling. It's green is transformed. MHM, multi attention. Okay, yeah. And this is the performance on different uh, NLP tasks uh, in the pile data set or something. And uh, this transformer plus plus is the um, con considered to be the best transformer model right now. And the perplexity, as you can see, with increasing uh, like uh, complexity, it is like almost on par with transformers. So lower perplexity is better performance. This is again zero foot evaluations. So what they are claiming is a Mamba of 2.8 billion parameters 
is enough to beat GPT models and others. These are like almost four times bigger models. It can beat. Yes, trading has not happened yet. Right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is your yeah. performance. Yeah. And in each of these things, so for 130 million parameter model is there. So everything is outperforming bigger models. So it's efficient and it can do better. Do you have a vision form of this number? Yeah, Vision Mamba has already come. Like took the VAT architecture, replaced attention with this thing, and they released the paper. But the performance is not that great. Like, because one thing we never have this. So the so if you look at it. Uh, all this performance increase and everything is the, the effect of efficiency is kicking in when sequence length becomes too long. We never encounter such long sequences in vision in that sense. Like we are not unrolling it as a pixels, right? We are always unrolling it as patches and our sequence length doesn't cross something like thousand or something like that. So in that scale, whether it is competitive is a different task. And what in VA vision Mamba they did was, so this is like, um, in some sense, they had this LSTM kind, by LSTM kind of a thing. There is bidirectional Mamba. Like there will be one from this way and one from that way kind of. Because parallel scan operation, one is from this right. So the other one is from this to that kind of a thing they have done. But the performance is not that great. And they didn't even... People are actually using the same concept, old concept. Yeah, exactly. It's like looking back to RNNs in some sense. And uh, yeah, so this is like, again, this isn't... So DNA is one thing where long sequences come into play. And they are showing that they have higher, like lower perplexity than other models, like transformers and other, uh, more basically. And uh, yeah, so this is the efficiency that I was talking about. So the scan operation in PyTorch is this green thing. It is like uh, much slower. But this red is the uh, their selective scan with fused kernel and recomputation. See the performance. It's the fastest among all of them. But flash attention is the blue one. It is performing better than that. And here is the throughput for a sequence length of 2048. And uh, so they are basically comparing with different transformer models, like 1.3 billion. So basically, there is a 1.4 by 3 billion parameter and a 6.7 billion transformer, and MAMA with also same parameters. So what we can see is uh, uh, the, now, the batch thing is that with each batch size, what is the throughput? And uh, MAMA, blue and green are MAMA. And like it is beating the throughput of corresponding size transformers. The thing is, uh, you cannot increase the batch size after 16 for transformers. Like after this, there is no transformer. The red thing vanished. And uh, after 64, the orange also vanished. The small transformer also doesn't fit in the A180 GP1. So, but see that the uh, like Mamba is able to still fit in the architecture. What, what is like what is the batch size that you can batch size you know batch size right yeah, like yeah in our so how much yeah so if you increase the batch size you increase the parallelism right as long as you can fit it in the gpu yeah yeah okay. Yeah. Oh, you are saying in NLP task with this much amount of token, we don't even. We don't even fit it in that. Fifteen. Nah. That's the <laughs> And In now, we wait, wait, wait. Let, let us discuss after because this thing might uh, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, last thing that is like, with all these more like uh, innovations, we expect that this is an amazing, such an amazing paper. But then this happened. They submitted this to ICLR and got rejected. In ICLR, this got rejected, and this is the uh, meta reviewer. They are like access of results on LoRa, evaluation using perplexity. Uh, like uh, there were major concerns with raised the performance gap, this that, and people were pissed. Like in the open review itself, people were like, "This is better than ninety percent of the paper that got accepted," and it is a shame and everything. And Twitter went crazy. Like it had a score of eight eight six three. Like two eight, and still got rejected. And uh, so this is the thing. The when one of the reviewers asked for a ten billion parameter experiment, and then they are asking for a fifty thousand dollar experiment. 
So this is what reviewers ask. <laughs> and yeah, and three and six are asking for a lot. They have got extra points already. The model has still quality memory requirement, which doesn't. So people are evaluating who doesn't even know what they are talking about. And uh, yeah, but this paper is still not accepted. It is still rejected. <laughs> yeah, the paper is not published yet. It's in a. So this is the final slide. Anyway, everyone knows transformer. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> 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 